Friday, a record 8.9 magnitude earthquake violently shook the island of Japan for a full five minutes. Windows shattered, roofs collapsed, and skyscrapers fell. The residents of Japan were caught in the largest earthquake that has ever hit the nation. Businessmen, teachers, and families and children ran into the streets to escape the following destruction. It has been estimated that the quake shifted the entire island a whole 13 feet. By Friday, the confirmed death toll was at 137, and it is expected to rise. Delta canceled 29 flights in and out of the country, leaving thousands of people stranded at airports. Entire communities are cut off from the southern part of the country where most of the aid and relief is. However, rescuers are working around the clock to pull survivors from the rubble. To add even more devastation, this record-breaking earthquake triggered a tsunami that reached all the way to the United States coast. Here's Mr. Ruth with what exactly a tsunami is. The tsunami that rocked Japan um, was a product of um, a, a massive kind of part of the earth where you have two plates that are coming together. One plate is being subducted underneath the other and as that happens it produces a tremendous amount of friction and then eventually that friction builds up to the point where there's this massive release of energy. Now that's the earthquake and because it displaces water in the process it kind of pops up and you know generally speaking that that energy moves up through the water column and then propagates outwards. Literally the whole ocean is behind it just pushing towards the shoreline and so you know, yeah it's a wave but it's really more of a surge of energy and it's the water and whatever's in that water you know whether it's concrete or or rubble or rocks or or cars, trucks, boats you know all of that becomes part of this this just this flood of, of debris and it just you know, devours everything in its path. As we have seen with this tragedy that occurred in Japan, they can level homes, roads, and cause major destruction. Black water covered farms and swirling currents swept people out to sea. As a result of the earthquake and tsunami, several of Japan's nuclear power plants are shutting down, leaving millions without access to electricity. Many of the nuclear plants in Japan are equipped with a system to shut off in case of an earthquake. All did, except for one. Let's go to Mr. Ostrowski to give some insight into the science behind this nuclear disaster. Concerning the uh situation in Japan as a chemistry teacher. Uh, I would like to contribute at least some information concerning uh, the nuclear disaster that's, that's ongoing. In a nuclear reactor, the fuel is made of uranium-235. And the percent composition or the amount of uranium-235 is only about 3% of the fuel that you would find in a, a weapons grade is there in a power plant. So no matter what happens in a nuclear power plant, you're never going to see an explosion that looks like something you would see in Hiroshima or Nagasaki. That's what's not going to happen. In terms of uh, the radioactivity that's, that's being detected, you have to just take a look and see what happens in fission. And in order to start a fission reaction, you need neutrons to bump into uranium-235. So what's happening in the reactors, the core and the pellets are being exposed to air. So one of the first things you have to do is deprive it of neutrons with the seawater and pouring it over to keep it cool. So um, hopefully, uh, the Japanese people are getting the help that they need. The scientists are working feverishly to try to control uh, the radiation and deal with it. If you're interested in aiding the Japanese people, you can text Red Cross to 90999 to donate $10 from your phone. Or you can visit globalgiving.org to donate anything from $10 to $75. Remember, Oilers, every little bit helps. Recently, there's been uprisings in northern Africa. In addition to Egypt and others, there's been one in Tunisia and Libya. In mid-February, the Libyans rebelled. The rebel troops have been relatively successful in their efforts to cause chaos and disrupt government until now. On March 3rd, they reclaimed one of Libya's main oil ports in Brega. A troop of pro gaddafi militants set out to take port from them, but were met with stiff and overwhelming opposition. However, three days later, the rebels were pushed out of Bin Jawad, a town in Libya. It was estimated that 10 rebels were killed in this attack. On March 15th, rebel forces came back with airstrikes, but were quickly pushed out by opposition forces. There is little known about rebel group and its leader. While this group remains mysterious, we hope for the safety of the citizens and for this conflict to end quickly with the least amount of casualties. Hey Oilers, Trey Nesbitt here with your HB Holla! So gas prices are on the rise, but do you know how much of the world gasoline consumption the U.S. is responsible for? Is it A, 25%, B, 44%, C, 62%, or D, 89%? Holla if you think you know the answer. 
Time's up. The answer is B, 44%. Public transportation and carpooling probably aren't a bad idea while gas prices are so high. I'll see you next week with your HB Holla. I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed the recent increase in gas prices. It is believed that this fluctuation is due to the protests that have been occurring in Egypt, Bahrain, and Yemen, and various other countries in Northern Africa. A good majority of the U.S.'s oil mostly comes from these countries in the Middle East, so it might be finally time to invest in a hybrid or a bicycle. Welcome to Oilers Sports Update. This week, our spring sports started off with a bang. Lacrosse, boys volleyball, and softball each had victories in their preseason games. On March 9th, boys volleyball played Laguna Beach and dominated winning all three matches against them. Softball went up against San Juan Hills and came away with a victory 7-2. Congratulations to all the spring sports with victories and keep up the good work, guys. If you want to come out and support boys volleyball next week, they're playing on Friday, March 25th against Santa Margarita at 6 p.m. And here's Jessica Amaral with your Game of the Week. Hey Oilers, Jessica Amaral here at the Huntington Beach Stadium where our boys lacrosse team is taking on Modern Day High School. Modern Day is ranked number nine in the county, so we're definitely going to have our hands full with them. We have a two-game winning streak going into today's game, so we hope to keep that rolling. Let's go get them, Oilers. Today's game was extremely close. Both teams battled back and forth for the lead. The final score of the game was 8-7, with Huntington taking home the win. A.J. Schaffner and David Clegg had one goal, Tim Francis had two goals, and Stephen Kressel had an outstanding four-goal game. We now have a three-game winning streak going into this year's season. Great job, Oilers. And that's all for this week's Oilers Sports Update. See, See you, you next, next time. time. APA's upcoming spring musical, Les Miserables, is right around the corner. The show is 7.30 this weekend and next weekend. The Sunday matinee is at 2. The Surfrider Foundation has been around since 1984 and now has over 50,000 members. They are a non-profit organization dedicated to protect the world's waves, oceans, and beaches. Here's Steffi Q with the details. Hi, I'm Steffi Q. The Surfrider Foundation is a nonprofit environmental organization that runs beach cleanups right here in Huntington Beach twice a month. Beach cleanups are a good way to earn community service hours. The next scheduled cleanup day is Saturday, March 26, from 8 a.m. till noon on Golden West and PCH. If any of you are interested, please visit hsbsurfrider.org for more info. Let's keep Surf City a trash free city. Hope to see you there, Oilers. Hey guys, I'm Allison Schott with the Facebook Challenge, and we are here to surprise Amanda Hayami because she answered her question last week correctly. So let's go get her. Hey guys, I'm here with Canvas Update, and we're here to surprise Amanda because she answered our question last week correctly. So Amanda, what is our mascot's name? Bardal. Okay, congratulations. Here's a donut and a Canvas Update pen. Thanks guys. This week's Facebook Challenge question is, what play inspired the name of our school's yearbook? The first person to put the answer correctly on our Facebook page will be the winner. Good luck. 